Hello everyone, this is Stephen Clark and friends back here with another light-hearted look at Thailand's news and the surrounding areas. Two British men arrested for dealing drugs in Thailand. Deputy Prime Minister scoffs at demands from southern insurgency groups. Lanterns grounded in Chiang Mai for Loi Khao Festival. Chiang Mai hotels, vacancies worst in 10 years. But first up, how an Australian mother tricked by Nigerian scammers into being a drug mule. Very, very sad story. The Australian Federal Police had information that Australian woman Yoshi Taylor was innocent. They did nothing to help her. Johnny Siam reporting. Yoshi Taylor, a primary school teacher, a single mother of two, left Brisbane to Phnom Penh in 2013 for a job selling local arts and crafts from a reputable dealer, Precious Max, and his associate, French woman, Savinio. There were two other Australians there for the same business deal. On the return trip from Phnom Penh, Miss Taylor was taken into custody and the backpack, filled with arts and craft samples she had been given, was found sewn into the lining, two kilograms of heroin. She was then charged and jailed for 23 years. The other two returned to Australia, one to Perth and the other to Melbourne. They were taken into custody and the same as Miss Taylor. Two kilograms of heroin was also sewn into the backpacks they were given with the arts and craft product. The two Australians were exonerated. The AFP did not update Cambodian authorities. A team of lawyers, of hearing about Miss Taylor, went to Cambodia to launch an appeal. In Cambodia, Precious Max and Savanio were sentenced to 25 years. In 2018, the appeal for Miss Taylor went ahead and she was set free. Now back in Australia, she has lost her house and her savings. During the whole saga, the AFP reported to Cambodian authorities, leading to the arrest and convictions, but forgot about Miss Taylor. Should the AFP abandon Miss Taylor? If you've got any comments, put them in the chat box and we'll talk about it. Johnny Siam out. On August the 20th, more than 20 police officers used a warrant to search a home in Chambari, Eastern Thailand seizing nearly five grams of cocaine. The police also seized the house, estimated to be worth six million baht. Their car, motorbikes, and bank accounts, three bank accounts. The house was occupied by a British man, Luke Timmins, 28, already wanted for drug offences under international arrest warrants issued by the UK, and a 24-year-old Thai woman known as Sherman. Now both tested positive to cocaine, with Timmins claiming he purchased the drugs for 2,500 baht, a gram, from a Thai man in Pattaya's walking street. Now this is interesting. Luke Timmins' father, Michael, was previously jailed for six years for smuggling mephedrone into the UK. The drug was used to make 30 kilos of bath salts, as known as the zombie drug. At the same time, in Mahasarakam province, Another team of officers arrested a fellow Englishman, Danielle Wood, 29, on charges of drug dealing. At the time of his arrest, he was taking his wife to the temple. While Wood was not in possession of any illegal substances, he was found to have overstayed his Thai visa since October the 17th, 2016, and also had a warrant out for his arrest in the UK on charges of smuggling drugs into the country. He had flown to Thailand, married a Thai woman, and worked with Luke Timmons selling drugs in Pattaya. Both men were found to be connected to Adrian Matthews, who has gang connections in Pattaya. He was stopped by customs officials in New Zealand in possession of methamphetamines, ice worth about 17 million US dollars in October 2017. Hi there, it's uh, Mark here. Uh, just a couple of stories from around Thailand. Um, this year with the um, Loi Katong up in Chiang Mai, which is actually very, very big, they usually have a big lantern festival, which they send up uh, lit lanterns up into the sky. But the government and conservation groups have decided that this year they're not going to allow it. They were going for the Guinness World of Records, which is a bit of a shame, but I can see the point of the conservation group saying, look, these when these come down with the wire, they do damage to wildlife, cattle, and also a good chance that um, they may catch fire to someone's home. Thank you very much indeed. Yeah, thanks, Mark. I've actually been to the Locatel uh, Festival before in Chiang Rai. It is amazing. It's a fantastic sight, seeing all those lanterns go into the air. Uh, it, it's truly something you'll never forget. I uh, hope they can find a way to keep it going. It's fantastic. 
there's definitely a lack of tourists around Chiang Mai it's Thailand's tourist mecca of the north ladies and gentlemen and as we've been presenting here on the channel the hotels and businesses in Thailand are struggling with record low numbers of tourists in fact the lowest numbers of tourists for the last 10 years it's really creating a, a real uh, bargain bonanza in hotel accommodation discounted prices at the moment we can see on some of these Agoda prices are, are way way down 75% discounted prices 80% discounted prices there's some really great hotels there like that Raming Lodge there we just saw the um, Duang Tawan Hotel I've stayed in. Would normally pay like 2,400 baht a night. It's going for 1,200 baht a night. A genuine half price off the off the regular discounted price. We can really get some good bargains now in uh, northern Thailand on accommodation. And uh, shopping prices are dropping too around the markets. The uh, bargaining power is a lot better. Let's have a look at it. Let's have a look at a review. There's the pool, we've kind of um, shut it down, small rooms out the back here, there's the pool rooms, there's more rooms out the back as well, you can see there's not many people staying here, looks like all these rooms are empty, there's no one on my floor, there's not really many, uh, still not many tourists around in a Chiang Mai town. Well that's a review from uh, last week, so I was staying at the um, Riverside, Riverside house hotel there and uh, there was hardly anyone staying there there was no one around those pool rooms um, it's just basically a ghost town and that's uh, right on the river at the end of Loy Crow Road um, quite amazing let's have another look at this hotel I stayed in three weeks ago and um, it was the same three or four weeks ago hotel's got 17 floors there be about 25 or 30 rooms on each floor. There's not many people staying here right now. I don't think it's really low season. I'm not sure Chiang Mai has a low season. Probably the low season would be uh, in the burning time up until around uh, December through to April. It can get a bit smoky. When I checked in, there's probably four people here last night. The Northern Thai Hotels Association is saying at this time of year, coming into the rainy season, occupancy should be around 70 to 80 per cent. I've seen hotels over the last couple of months where I've stayed at are, uh, I'd say, almost empty. The Hotel Association is claiming they're the lowest in 10 years. The bookings are down at least 40 per cent on last year's records. Um, it's quite bad. They're really um, in trouble and if you want to come to Northern Thailand, particularly Chiang Mai, you can expect some great bargains in hotels and accommodation, uh, all facets of the tourist industry. There is a real uh, dearth of tourism up here. Johnny Siam reporting. High level talks between Deputy Prime Minister Prawat Wonsawong and the Barisan Revolusi Nationale have not yet yielded a solution to the insurgency in the south of Thailand. In the area, Malay speaking region, predominantly Buddhist Thailand, that has now had approximately 7,000 people over the last 15 years killed and weekly attacks, the BRN demanded the release of their people held in Thai jails. The provinces of Yala, Patani and Navatiwad were part of the Malay and annexed to, Thailand, uh, to the Kingdom of Siam in 1909. Parfar Kar stated that it would not attack north of the three provinces as they did not wish to be seen as terrorists. 